Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. And today I wanna to talk about how to use gradient fills to make vignettes. Now I know you can go into Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom and make vignettes all day long. And they're really quick and they're really easy. But I'm gonna show you a 100% customizable vignette that will allow you to pinpoint exactly where you want the viewer's eye to go. So here would be your traditional Adobe Camera Raw vignette. Here's more of your Photoshop gradient vignette. And here's another thing that you can do when you know how to use these vignettes by maybe making a colored vignette around there to really push the mood and feel of your photograph. So today I want to talk about vignettes and I want to give you an alternative to the vignette that you might be used to in something like Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. I'm going to point out the good things about those and I'm going to point out the bad things about those. But before I begin, this comes from a course that I've just created on F64Elite.com. It's called Photoshop Foundations and it's all about gradients. In that course, I'm talking about 107 minutes of gradient knowledge, okay? And from that, I talk about vignettes and using the gradient fill for vignettes. So let's talk about the traditional way we do vignettes. So I'm gonna pr press Command or Control J on this and pr press Control Shift A to get myself into Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. So typically, if, if you were to say, hey Blake, go ahead and put a vignette on this. I would typically come over here to Effects, I would go to the Post Crop Vignette, and I might go ahead and bring this down with Highlight Priority Set, maybe find a good midpoint, and make that a little bit more round, and feather it out quite a bit more. And I could further protect those highlights by bringing this up a little bit. So if we look at our before, there's our before and there's our after. It's not a bad vignette, but what have I done there? I've just created a tone barrier essentially around my image and I've looked at the midpoint. Well, that's all fine and well, but using the gradient fill for a vignette will allow us all kinds of different things. So I'm gonna go ahead and press okay right here so that we can get back into Photoshop and I'll call this ACR vignette, not vignette, <laughs> vignette. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna turn the eyeball off on that. So I'm gonna click on this background layer here. I'm gonna press D to default my colors to black and white because these colors will dictate what happens with my gradient fill. So I'm gonna press the uh, adjustment layer here and click on gradient. Now what you'll see here is that it's just giving me a black to transparent gradient because that's what I have set up for my gradient fill. What I need is I need to change this to radial and I need to reverse this so that the black is all around the outsides. So one thing that we can do here is, I'm not gonna do anything else with this yet. I'm gonna click on the gradient here, and what you need to do, if yours isn't set up this way, make sure that you have black down here and black down here, because that's gonna dictate this vignette. Now, the vignettes in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom so much easier to use because you just put a vignette on there and that's it. Well, here we have quite a bit more control over how that vignette is going to affect our image. If we're talking about the feather and how much feathering we have in there, we can use these tools. So go ahead and grab this black one right here and move this all the way over to the right so it's right down here like this. And now what we'll do with this top black is if we move this to the left, you'll notice how this basically adjusts our feather. So it looks like we're looking at her through a telescope. So if we move this over to the right, you can see how it's gonna really feather itself in. So we kinda want this to be somewhere right about here where we start to get a nice transition from a clear on out to pure black. Okay, and we'll press okay. So take a look at these settings and that's about where you're gonna want this vignette to be and go ahead and press okay. Now the rest of the things we have to manipulate our vignette with the gradient fill happen right here. Because this is a radial gradient, I can grab this and move it anywhere. And look, I can spotlight anything. So instead of having that vignette just go and go right in from the sides, I can dictate exactly where I want this to be. And I can use this scale to really help me out. If I move the scale all the way down, watch what happens. I'll move it down to 12. This is exactly where the vignette is gonna start. So let's say I want the vignette to start on her beautiful little smile here. I can then change the scale and bring it up until we get a nice fade around on the outsides. And that would be a pretty darn good vignette for this image. I'm dictating that I don't want the vignette to be centered inside the image. I want it to be centered on her face. 
So if I press OK, the other thing that we have here, because we're using an adjustment layer, is not just the settings that we have in our gradient fill like we just saw, but we also get the ability to use blend modes, we get the ability to use opacity, we get the ability to use blend if. So check this out. Let's say I change this to soft light or overlay. Watch how the vignette completely changes based on the blend mode that I select. So it's a nice subtle vignette that we have here that is boosting the contrast because when we have black set to soft light, it will make dark things darker, but never make them pure black. If we change this back to normal, I'm gonna show you here, we have the opacity settings. We could drop that opacity down a little bit. And we can also come right in here to the gradient fill, double click it, and that's gonna bring us into the blending options. Now I've shown blend if many, many times. Basically what we're gonna be saying here is that we want our underlying layers highlights to be protected from this vignette. This is essentially what's happening when you're making your vignettes in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom and you set it to highlight priority. So if we take this slider and we move it to the left, it's gonna start protecting those highlight areas from basically what's pure white over here and transitioning into areas of like maybe zones eight or nine, okay? So if we bring this all the way down to about here, we can then press Alt or Option and split and feather this so we get a nice clean transition on those highlight areas. Another thing that we have the ability to do here because it's on an adjustment layer, which is different than Adobe Camera Raw as a vignette, is that if we click on the mask here, I can then brush in with black, I'm gonna press D to default them and X to switch to black, I can paint with black on areas where I don't want that vignette to go. So now we're really dictating what we want this vignette to do. So instead of just going with the tra traditional band of a vignette that goes around our image, we're making a vignette that's more customizable. And you might be saying, well, Blake, I could just click on this Adobe Camera Raw vignette and I could just uh, you know, put a mask on there and do the same thing. That's true, but you don't get access to double click this gradient fill at any time that you want and make adjustments to it. So here I can now move this around and still get this exactly where I want it to be. Maybe it's a nice little halo around her head like that. And that looks pretty good, but watch this. Now we can say, okay, I like that vignette, but what happens if I change the color of them of that vignette? So if we click on this color down here and we click right here, we can change this color to any color we want in our palette. How cool is that? So now, not only do we have a vignette around this beautiful bride, we also have a colored vignette around her that is really starting to set the mood of how she might be feeling. If, you know, blue is what you want to do, it might be kind of maybe not the best thing to choose for a wedding. You might want something brighter, more on the yellow to orange side to make it feel a little warm and comforting and happy and maybe proud a little bit there, you know, change the color a little bit to maybe a red or an orange or something like that to uplift it, make it feel a little bit more uplifting or change it to something like blue or cyan if you want that vintage uh, look on the image that we can get there. Press okay, press okay, press okay. And now this vignette not only has the capability of being black, but it also has the capability of being blue. And we can change that to something like soft light if we wanna get a different look for what's happening around that image and subtly apply some color to that image using a vignette. So vignettes are great to target the audience into the area that you want them to go, but you don't necessarily have to be stuck to the traditional boring, bland, around the figure vignette or around the landscape vignette. You can get very detailed and very meticulous with them by using a gradient fill as a vignette because it opens you up to many more things. Number one, the ability to move that vignette exactly where you want the viewer's eye to go. Number two, the ability to use blend modes like soft light color overlay, the ability to, to drop that opacity a little bit to make it a little bit more subtle, the ability to use masks, and because it's a gradient fill layer, it can be modified at any time by double clicking in that gradient fill to maybe change the color or the direction or even the type of vignette that you're going to be using for the image. 
As I stated before, this is all coming from a new course that I created called Photoshop Foundations Gradients. It's in the F64 Elite shop, and it's 107 minutes on gradients. And I'm not talking gradients just like this. I'm talking some of these gradients show you how to make some beautiful, robust sunsets that are just out of this world gorgeous. And that course also comes with all of the gradients that I use in my workflow, plus an actions package so that all you have to do is click on that action and it does this kind of stuff for you automatically without having to remember all those settings. And it also comes with 107 minutes of education, as I stated before. So again, my name is Blake Rudis. If you like this, please comment on it, share it, like it, tell a friend and subscribe, especially subscribe with the little notification icon. That way, anytime I do new tutorials on my YouTube channel, you will get notifications for them. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it. Have a great day.